Welcome to this special panel discussion. Education, as we know, has changed, especially in the last two years, ever since the pandemic. That's what we're discussing today. Education in a post-pandemic world, embracing the change, and also looking at emerging opportunities. As you know, we have Dr. Ashut Narayan, the Higher Education Minister, also the Minister for IT and BT. We have Mr. Pulke Jain, the co-founder of Vedantu, head of product as well. We also have Dr. Vidya Shankar Shetty. She's a deputy registrar, Manipal Academy of Higher Education. Thank you, ma'am. I'll come to you first, Dr. Ashut Narayan. Children are now getting back to colleges and schools. It's a huge challenge for the government. How is this transition for the government? What are the challenges? How are you dealing with it now? Uh, Arish, it was definitely, it was a very challenging time because there was a lot of disruption in the learning process. Probably knowing fully the challenges what we are facing, the government took a lot of initiatives through various universities and institutions to address this challenge. And we were able to do it very successfully. And uh, since we made use of the technology, online and offline, hmm. even in the online, we were able to provide the learning as well as offline. So the offline classes were also conducted, online classes were also conducted as per the convenience of the student. And we ensured the learning was given topmost priority. Even with all these challenges, we were very successful in addressing the concern. And in the state of Karnataka, uh, we closely worked with all the stakeholders and we were uh, very successful probably during COVID also, we ensured the learning happened properly and the exams were conducted on time and even the entire learning process was given uh, in the right way it was done and we were, came out very successful even though there were challenges we did we did things very successfully and we ensured the learning happened properly true and now things are going very smoothly and now all the students have been vaccinated we read out to each and every institution vaccination was given topmost priority the students were given the topmost, they were taken under the priority sector and each and every student were vaccinated in the respective institution. Mm. Now I think 100% vaccination has been done. Absolutely. And things are going very successfully and we have implemented national education policy. True. And it's more on the right way of learning, relevant concept-based learning, problem-solving learning. In, in fact, I want to learning. discuss the national education policy a bit in detail. I'll come to that in the next question. I'll go to Mr. Pulkit. Pulkit, uh, one sector which has played a stellar role during the pandemic was the edtech sector. It's seen a huge boom. At the same time, now there are challenges when we are moving into a normal world or a new normal world. What were the behavioral changes that you saw during the pandemic? Significant ones, the ones that you think stand out yeah so uh, thanks a lot uh, so it's a very important question for us to understand that what happened during the pandemic times but before that i would like to emphasize that uh, see there are a lot of these fundamental problems that we together are uh, here to solve and the problems are beyond uh, the world of pandemic that we saw the problems are of uh, providing accessibility to quality education to our students in every nook and corner of the country and doing so in an affordable way and uh, these are the problems for which companies like Vedantu came into existence. So just giving my background, I've been in education for 16 years now. Post-college, I left my job, I became a teacher and taught in small villages and towns in this country. In an offline setup, I understood that uh, taking, let us look at us, the people here. Do we become teachers at large, people like us? No, we don't become teachers. Let me say the better percentile of the society doesn't become teacher. Even if we become teacher, we will not go to every small part of the country. Will I go to teach in a small village in this country? I don't know, right? So these are the problems which uh, were to be solved, which are to be solved, for which ed tech came into existence, right? So I'll talk about certain phases coming to your question. So I started Vedantu, this concept of live online teaching and learning in 2014. 14 to 16, 17 was a phase when 
the 4G was just coming in. Hmm. Uh, Geo had just started coming in. The data was just starting to get cheaper. There was a phase when we started to explore uh, the tech industry. How education in this new mode can be to solve the problems I talked about? 17 to 19 was a phase when we saw children actually accepting this way of learning. Uh, children discovering different ways of learning online, their needs, exploring their needs. Post 20, when the pandemic hit, it went. In, it was a watershed moment when every child, every family in the country had no option but to learn online. Yes. Is this the true reality of the world? No. It is. It is. Let me say, it is a blip. Hmm. But this blip taught everybody, including us, government, families, students, that what can they really depend on something like this new mode of learning for their detailed education? We saw a lot of positive answers to it. We saw a lot of positive signals. Hmm. Children truly depended complete, not for the supplemental learning, but for the entire year long sick learning for the competitive exams uh, to get their dreams, hmm. achieve their dreams. They could depend on it. For example, last year through Vedantu, uh, around 1500 students got into exams like IITs also. Hmm. Interestingly, 70% of them were from small villages and towns, tier oh. 3, tier 4, right? Hmm. This is, I think, was a very big behavior shift. Hmm. Children in smaller places, could discover that they can learn online. Uh, they could discover uh, not just the entire uh, curriculum, but they could learn a concept, they could ask a doubt online. Hmm. But I could also see a lot of negative behaviors evolving. Because hmm. you know, when children in the pandemic times could not go out, hmm. when, because see, learning is not just learning physics, chemistry, maths, yeah. subject. Learning is learning from the social world, social True. interactions, playing, right? And that got curtailed. Hmm. So, we saw a lot of anxiety, a lot of mental stress, a lot of fatigue because of classes happening only online, true, right? True. And that manifested into very negative behaviors as well, yeah. which was a big problem, which it, probably will hit a balance as we go ahead. Absolutely. In fact, I want to take that question to Dr. Shetty. Do you see that problem, behavioral problem, uh, now that students have started returning to classes? I think the, the student community has been the only community which has been very hopeful about getting back to the campuses. Basically, I think um, in-person education is what would benefit them the most, you know, True. more than the remote education or the online education. Like uh, Pulkit just mentioned, I think um, that's the age when students uh, love to network. Hmm. They love to, you know, interact with their peers. Socialize, yes. Get into a lot of activities along with them. And I think this is which um, is the most important um, essential of education, basically, you know, mingling mm, and true. talking and collaborating and working together. Of course, there has been a, a shift in their behavior because they've been monitored, you know, last two years at mm. home and also by their teachers yeah, on yeah. screen. So it must have been very, very difficult for them. True. It's easy for us to say, yeah. but for them, it's been absolutely, um, you know, grueling time. Absolutely. With mothers peering over, with the fathers peering over, and even, you know, the entire family looking at True. what it was. True. That little space, you know, to get out and move in and be with their age group is something that happens only in a campus life. True. So right now you see them very, very active, very, yeah. very, at times probably very um, aggressive also for that matter, and wanting to be with people and wanting to be with humanity. And I think that urge is seen in this generation. Absolutely. In, in fact, that's where we want to go next in terms of this discussion. What next for the sector, right? Every state government or many state governments across the country, Dr. Ashwatna Ryan, believe that handing out a tablet to a student is bringing in digital education, right? These are populist schemes that many governments have announced. Where does Karnataka stand? There are demands that there should be personal adaptive learning uh, courses or softwares given to students. How does Karnataka look at bringing in digital in education, striking this balance between offline and online? Uh, Arish, uh, providing device is a part of digitalization. Hmm. It's not everything. Yes, providing device will not help the student. We need to make the circle complete by developing a content digitalization of the entire content and virtualization. Along with that, we need to ensure each and every classroom becomes a smart classroom. So the, the full circle of digitalization can be completed with the right infrastructure, with connectivity, and as well as the learning management system and device. 
So in state of Karnataka, we took the initiative from the very beginning of our government coming to the power, we started this entire process. In the state of Karnataka now, completely the digitalization has been implemented and uh, we are trying to ensure the learning quality increases not less than 10 times, not one or two times. We want to ensure the learning quality increases by 10 times and thereby ensuring that each and every person who is engaged in learning is learning properly, whether he is getting, he's understanding what has been taught and what is the standard of learning. Mm. Completely we are capturing all the aspects and ensuring where he is, where he needs to reach and we want to ensure the best of the best learning system is in place. Uh, this is a competition. We need to be, be the best in the world, not just, you know, being best among ourselves, mm. among a class. You are saying it is a holistic development. Yeah, holistic development and uh, we are working in this direction. There are a lot of challenges and we will overcome all these challenges and reach the goal of providing the best education. The state of Karnataka has become a real uh, role model in the terms of education. As Pulkit was mentioning of the uh, edutech, probably in the entire world, the kind of good response what we have seen for the edutech is not been seen in the most developed countries also. Mm. Educate, edutech has been very well received in India and especially in the state of Karnataka. Mm. True. So look True. at the response, definitely it is really good and it needs to be blended. It cannot be only digital mm. and at the same time they need to be part of the offline learning also. Offline and online both need to go hand in hand and we need to learn with peers, mm. with class. We need a hybrid model here. Yeah, so. hybrid model. And we are promoting the blended learning only. And how much you learn, it is less only. True. So probably in this direction, once you learn whatever in the class, again you want to uh, get, you know, address your uh, doubts or you want to learn it more appropriately, more better, probably the online content will be there to help out the student to learn better mm. and to understand better. So this is a way forward. So digitalization, virtualization is a way forward. And we need to work on a platform and ensure entire the governance is brought on a digitalization. So by doing so, we can ensure each and every concern of the student or the governance, the administration, admission, valuation, services, mm. every possible aspects can be very well, be effectively handled and True. we need to True. provide the right services to the entire, all the stakeholders of education. In fact, I have one question about NEP, I'll come to that. Uh, I know you have to rush out. You have another uh, program to attend. Before that, Pulkit, I'll come to you. How do we strike this balance? We are seeing several tech companies laying off people. I understand that the business that you saw during 2020, 21 is not normal. It was abrasion. So how does EdTech look at a hybrid model? One, how would they want to work? Second, there's some bit of concern saying that online education also means students are exposed to content that they shouldn't be. How do you bring in a safety feature there? That's a very uh, important question. Uh, how I see it, because see, it's been again, as I said, uh, uh, been 16 years for me in education, and uh, these two years were definitely a very different time. Yeah. But see, I always believe that we should have first principle thinking, and we should keep the problem statements at the center. So as I said, the, the problem of accessibility of quality education to every child in the country, and that too being done affordably, is the problem. Offline or online, are not the, uh, something that we should, you know, be, will be fixated to, hmm. right? How can we use technology to solve these problems should be at the core, at the center, right? So with that uh, thought in mind, I see that online education itself will solve a lot of problems as we go ahead because, you know, there is no way offline institutions can reach every small corner of the country True. that in an affordable way. On the other side, you know, we will start seeing the adoption of online in a way where it starts supplementing the offline education, right? The traditional, when I say offline, the traditional way of learning, right? Because see, when I used to teach as an offline teacher, could I understand every child sitting in my class? Hmm. No, right? I could see some faces but I actually was not very predictable in understanding every child. Yes. But today with technology, I can see what every child is doing with data. Hmm. Right, we can personalize, we can make the learning and the content adaptive, right, which can power the offline classrooms as well. So today we are experimenting with ways where can we take education 
in an offline way as well where we can hmm. beyond hmm. online education but using technology make it more uh, personalized hmm. and affordable as well so i think we will start seeing a new world emerging see the, the fundamental thing for human evolution is we always go towards higher effectiveness and efficiency yes and we definitely will it's a natural progression hmm. but we should give it time right hmm. education is a behavior which is centuries old hmm. it's not e-commerce how do we make it safer for children safer yes so uh, what we saw in the last two years children millions of kids for example every month we touch approximately 15 to 20 million kids in our free and paid classrooms which is 1.5 to 2 crore students mm -hmm. right with children coming online at such a rapid pace do we really understand that is this medium safe for them yes right uh, how children behave in this online medium so we started working on this in, for the last two years on how can we make online education space safer and we started working with ncpcr as well uh, the, the the premier body of the country by government of india to, to ensure child safety we created policy frameworks we created redressal mechanisms we created counseling mechanisms hmm. we created technology interventions to prevent something like this to happen using ai and uh, hmm. data sciences but i think it's a very nascent phase okay. and we should not assume that this new ways of learning you know will be i mean uh, safer by default hmm. we have to put in effort as an intervention as government to make it safer hmm. because the world will move in this direction however we uh, uh, we say no to it but that is yeah. how the efficiency and effectiveness true. will keep coming in true true in fact in this last segment of the discussion one thing that we will always have to talk about is how do we ensure that children who are graduating from colleges are job ready that's been a huge concern with uh, several companies the nep is said to be one of the landmark decisions a path breaking pro a project or a policy that will change this dr shetty i'll come to you first do you see this changing on how children or students are made job ready because that's been a concern by companies um, employability i think has always been a challenge for you know educationists but then um, uh, where the actual challenge lies is in ensuring that you no, no longer base it only on skill based learning but mm. also look at how multi skilled learning is possible i mean on this panel itself you have a medical doctor you have an educationist you have a literature person like me but then we have a doctor come minister exactly so we, that's what i was coming to he's moved into that and yeah. such a success Yeah. so that's something that is you know a skill that needs to be developed and i think um, it is only a platform like education where um, sensitivity to these skills and building on these skills and ensuring that that is tapped at a very early stage is what comes hmm. and today i think more and more education institutions have realized that it's no longer the textbook learning that's going to make a difference true true you know so you have to go beyond that box and think of ways out of the box to ensure that every bit of the personality is tapped into hmm. and i think that's where the nep brings a difference because True. for the first time in india we touching upon our ancient tradition of education which was the gurukul system balancing it very well with the modern education and bringing in technology which is very very important to gain education it's the right mix you believe exactly and i think teachers have proved it all you know they migrated so beautifully from the world of you know being natives of only classroom teaching to moving to the world of the digital native so it's true. quite a you know trend that has been set true, by true. education pull get you are in touch with the industry you come from the startup world you are also in touch with the industry where do you see the gap and how can any people bridge it so as uh, ma'am very rightly uh, put it uh, see i always believe that you know what we learn in schools and colleges is beyond ideally it should be beyond the subjects right for example when i used to teach calculus to my students i used to always say that you know it's not calculus that you're learning right it is how you should learn how you should solve a problem is what you're learning because the world is changing so fast yeah. right so what we want as industry today are very fast learners people who are not biased who can unlearn and learn new concepts and new uh skills very very fast and can nep i think nep is a great framework in molding the education the way we teach in such a way that we don't just teach subjects through subjects we teach how to learn mm. how to you know acquire mm. newer skills and there is a gap that i see in the startup world as well 
what we say about water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Yes. So we have a lot of uh, engineers and a lot of people around. But the right fitment, I think we have a lot of uh, work to do as, a, as an education. A long way to go, to yes. OK, I'll give the final word to you, Minister. Karnataka is one of the pioneer states in implementing NEP. It's being implemented very aggressively, effectively, as you said earlier in the program. How does the state now move on from here in implementation of NEP and ensuring that graduates, because Karnataka produces one of the highest number of engineers every year, how do we ensure that they're job ready? In this direction, constantly we have been working with all the stakeholders, all the universities, academicians, industry people, and thereby we are able to address the challenge to ensure each and every person is employable is a big challenge. Probably today, the employability of the graduates is only around 20%. Mm -hmm. So which we want to ensure it becomes 100%. It's a real big challenge what we have taken up. Probably in this direction, the open electives, the core subjects, mm -hmm. the core electives and the open electives, we are trying to design such a way the no more today is relevant, whatever changes has happened in the emerging areas or the new technology, the new subjects, the demand area, all these relevant subjects will be designed such a way so that the student can learn these subjects and be relevant and so that they, they don't miss out during their learning. They need not learn after passing out. During their course of study itself, we want to ensure the student will select these kind of subjects we need to offer them all these subjects and so they can select and ensure they learn the right things what is in force what is in demand in the market needs to be told to them because what is happening in the industry what is happening in the academic industry it is completely not connected yes so yes. that connect we are trying to bring and the communication we are trying to establish very strongly the industry has been working very closely with the academic institution and we are able to address all these concerns and I am very sure probably days to come uh, the employability level will definitely increase and they will become employable, job ready or even they can become employer also. True. So either way we are uh, taking up in the uh, topmost priority and things are happening in this direction. Along with this uh, the life skills and the soft skills also may need to be given top topmost priority and learning is happening through problem solving learning. Mm -hmm intellectually and they need to be very outstanding leadership qualities socially all aspects need to be he needs to be a very holistic and a well-rounded personality so we are emphasizing on all the aspects not just only academically all aspects have been emphasized so NEP is the biggest transformer and the biggest reform what is happening in our country by doing so I'm very sure we'll be the most progressive society and very promising society and futuristic society. I think NEP is the biggest solution, what I have seen, the best possible reform which could happen in our country and in our state by implementing, we can uh, ensure the bright future of our people. Absolutely. We really hope NEP acts as a game changer. It's been an engaging discussion, but uh, we are running out of time. The minister also has to go to a different engagement. Thanks a lot, all three of you, for joining us on this program. Thank you.